I've been painting miniatures for almost a year now. If you're watching this the day it's released, it's a year to the day. I've learned many things through the year, not the least of which is that I really, and I mean really, enjoy painting. This enjoyment has led me to paint more and ultimately get a bit better. However, this perceived improvement has led me to, at times, spend quite a bit of time on any given model, which certainly leads to better results. However, it, it also leads to a large number of unpainted, often unassembled minis. And grey plastic is a whole lot less fun than assembled and painted minis. So enter in some speed painting, or rather, painting faster than before to a standard I can stomach. Hey there hobby friends, I'm Jared and this is Caffeinated Miniatures. Thanks for hanging out with me today. There are plenty of painting an entire army in 24 hours kind of videos on the YouTube and while that's commendable, it really wasn't what I was after. Rather than a crazy and intense process that I would need to recover from, I wanted a more sustainable process that could get more minis painted on the tabletop while still looking relatively acceptable to me. And ultimately, as I said, I really like painting. I don't want to hate it just to get more painted minis on the tabletop. Conveniently or inconveniently, whatever, I had 20 thralls to paint. So I began priming them with Dark Neutral Grey from Monument Hobbies. As I planned on using a whole lot of contrast paints, thinking they'd help speed the process up, I then added a heavy zenithal highlight of bright warm grey. As a way of sort of working out the process, I started with five models, dry brushing some bold titanium white on. I tried to focus on the face and skin, and edges that faced upwards or would otherwise reflect light. With the dry brushing complete, I grabbed some contrast paints and began slapping them on. I was quite happy with the color scheme I had worked out painting that first deal, so I tried matching contrast paints I already had. My initial thought was to use Basilicanum Grey for the skin, but quickly decided against it as it was too opaque and, funny enough, lacked contrast. Going back to my paints, I gave Griff Charger Grey a shot. And it wasn't too bad, so I went with it for the rest. With the skin done, I grabbed a pot of the very appropriate Achillean Green and slapped it onto the pants. I've used this paint on skinks and it works relatively well as a contrast paint as it does tend to run into the recesses. Next up, Shyish Purple was slapped onto all the clothing. Then another aptly named color, Ethermatic Blue, was slapped onto all the armor. Rattle through the remaining details with Black Templar, Snakebite Leather, and Basilicanum Grey. And we've got paint on the entirety of five models. At this point I really wasn't impressed with the outcome. The skin was a little flat, but kind of acceptable for big blocks of models on the tabletop. However, the rest was just too flat, particularly the purple, which was a nearly even coat with virtually no contrast. The time invested at this point was roughly 15 minutes per model, so I gave myself another 5 minutes per mini to add some highlights. Rather than highlight everything, I left the skin as it was. It looked okay as it was and would consume quite a bit of time to highlight. Besides, I could always come back to it in the future. For the pants and robe, dress, cloak, things, I used very rough slashes and lines in one or two layers, adding some rough and ready highlights. This was done using Pro Acryl Sky Blue on the pants, then purple followed by magenta on the robe. For the trim of the robe, I added a quick edge highlight of bright warm grey, focusing on upward facing edges and brightest points of light. On all the armor panels, I mixed together jade and bold titanium white and added some quick points of light to edges and covered any places where I got a little too sloppy with the purple and blue contrast paints. Finally, I slapped some quick and sloppy points of light onto the gold and silver using golden brown, then ivory on the gold bits, and pale gray and white on the silver weapons.
After all of that, I had five minis done to a tabletop or maybe tabletop plus standard, completed in just under 20 minutes per model. Most importantly, done in a sustainable way that I still enjoyed. With the process pretty well nailed down, I started priming another 15 minis, once again spraying a Zenithal highlight with bright warm green. I decided the dry brush of white was kind of unnecessary and left that step out, instead moving directly to slapping on the contrast paints. I worked on these minis in sets of three. Rather than doing all of one color on all 15 minis, I'd apply it to three, then the next color on the same three, and so on. This felt more enjoyable and less tedious to me as I would quickly stack up painted minis, creating regular, small victories and building more and more momentum. Maybe doing them all at once would be more efficient, but it felt like a chore. And again, I didn't want this to be a hateful process for me. Once the contrast paints had been applied, I set about painting highlights as before, once again leaving the skin alone and working in sets of three. After less than five hours of painting, I had 15 more minis, all awaiting bases. I felt like warm sand would be a nice contrast to the minis and would help differentiate them from the base, helping them stand out on the tabletop. Besides, a watery beach felt appropriate for these soul-stealing pirate elves. Appropriately, I started by slapping on beach sand from AK Interactive, leaving some space for water effects later on. Once the beach sand was dry, I slathered on Seraphim Sepia Wash from Citadel. Giving it plenty of time to dry, I finished off the sand with a quick dry brush of thematically pale sand. Before I applied the water effects, I added some undertones, covering the area with Pro Acryl Jade. Then with a roughly 50-50 mix of jade and bold titanium white, I painted a rough band of lighter color next to the sand. Then with that mix still on the brush, I went back into the jade and roughly blended everything on the base, creating a decent gradient from dark to light. This didn't need to be perfect as it would be covered up in the next step. Once the paint was dry, I slapped on some water gel effects from AK Interactive. I wasn't at all careful here, I just slathered it on. Once I was dry, I used this texture shovel thing to add another small amount of the water gel, trying to mimic some small waves. With all of that dry, the final step was a quick dry brush of white to kind of solidify the water effect. Simple, but reasonably effective. All that was left was some gluing, and we've got a good chunk of finished minis. Well, there you go. 20 thralls, painted relatively quickly, and I think they look all right. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So, what did I take away from this? Will I do some speedy painting like this in the future? My main takeaway here is to give myself the freedom, the, the permission really, to just get stuff done. Every mini doesn't need to be done at, or even anywhere near, max effort. As the completed minis built up, I found myself getting more and more excited at the prospect of having all of these completed minis on the tabletop giving myself more momentum and really more drive to get more and more done. And that, that is pretty damn great. So I guess go easy on yourself and slap some paint on those minis. As always, if you made it this far, you are an absolute legend. While you're here, hit that like button. It's the number one way you can support the channel. And if you're feeling extra saucy, hit that subscribe as well. And thanks for watching. You are awesome. And I'll see you in the next one.